break now? Okay. Um, so we're here to talk about um, the cryptic name there. So it's simplified extension development and Magento 2. Uh, entirely my fault. And um, like Anton pointed out, uh, there's been a lot of friction in transitioning to M2, but it does have its upsides. Um, me and Hanu are the engineering team at Nosto for all the e-commerce platforms. Uh, we've been tooling for Magento for about four to five years now, and uh, largely on Magento 1. And um, it's a very different space for many of the agencies out there. We're building extensions that we're shipping out um, to a lot of our retailers. We have an active retailer base of over 20,000 merchants. And uh, Magento is at like the core of our delivery, uh, one of the core delivery platforms for us where we ship our extensions uh, and allow retailers to use personalization. And uh, in order to build a really good extension over the years on M1, we've gathered a lot of insights into uh, extension development on M1 and very recently on M2. And we can explain uh, both on a practical and uh, a very technical level as well to you the challenges that we've, uh, that we've overcome and all the tooling that we've built in order to support uh, this extension development. Um, we'll break down this talk into three parts. We'll take you through dependency management, packaging, and Hanu will explain to you the testing differences between M1 and M2. So without further wait, and I'll try to keep this presentation rather brief, we'll talk about dependency management. Now, irrespective of your platform or the programming language of choice you use dependencies. It is convenient, reusable bits of code, um, modular that you can use to kind of augment functionality into your uh, into the tooling that you're building. They could either add more functionality, they could make things easier, the variety of uses. However, dependency management on Magento One is kind of for extension development is a largely overlooked matter. And uh, we at Nosto have our own dependency that we use for all the e-commerce platforms that we build with. We have our PHP SDK, which in turn has a lot of transitive dependencies. We use Sentry for exception logging, Seclip for encryption. Uh, we use .n for environment variables. And getting this into Magento 1 was a really big challenge. Now, how do you manage third-party libraries when building an extension on Magento 1? It's right up there in that often overlooked libs folder. So I'm going to walk you through some of it. When we wanted to use the SDK that we have in Magento 1 or any other library, any modern PS, uh, PHP code base is either PSR0 or PSR4 compliant. You need to have an autoloader that supports that. Uh, there is no built-in mechanism for supporting transitive dependencies in Magento 1. Like how would you recursively traverse the dependency tree to pull in all the dependencies? If you can't use a PSR0 or PSR4 code, how do you generate class map for all the, for the dependencies? Um, maybe you might need to patch the autoloader, which is not a uh, same thing to do. It's rather scary, actually. And if you want to generate a class map to include files, like what would be the valid entry points for your, for your uh, project? Like would it just be observers and controllers and blocks or are there other points to where to include all the list of dependencies? So in, in doing so, we actually found this to be quite uh, painful and slowing us down. While all the other e-commerce platforms that we built, uh, built for were able to progress ahead by using uh, our SDK and Magento 1 was lagging behind quite a lot. So we actually started taking a look at how Magento 1 class loading works. If you look at Magento 1 class loading, it's uh, basically using a Zend or a pair compliant class loader where Every class is basically separated by underscores and it's loaded from the lib directory where the underscores get replaced into slashes and then it's loaded. Now this has its upsides that the file locations are rather predictable, but it means that you must also have code that is compliant to be loaded in this particular matter. For us, when we first started using our SDK, it wasn't in this particular way. So we manually rearranged large parts of our SDK to be uh, directly includable from different parts of our code base and use it. But of course, this workflow was rather slow and tedious. Now, if you look at a modern day contrast like to how our SDK was structured, it's PSR0 and PSR4. They are both very standard ways of doing PHP uh, in terms of naming conventions. PSR4 is basically namespace code but allows for a much shallower directory structure. But, and it's almost a more, uh, norm for most modern PHP projects. And if you look at a thing, uh, a project like Composer, it supports 
PSR4 autoloading out of the box. Now, in order to kind of use our library into Magento 1, or any library for that matter, we wrote a tool in-house that we've been using now for all our Magento 1 installs. It's called Purify. <coughs> it's an add-on for Composer that you basically run. It recursively parses all your developer dependencies and your production dependencies, parses all the PHP doc, builds an abstract syntax tree, and rewrites them into a PSR0, PSR4, a Zen compliant format, sorry. It strips out all the namespaces and uh, right, rewrites it into a lib directory. So on the right, you can see, on the left, you'll see the original composer code. On the right, you will see how it's been rewritten by a tool. We've open sourced it. I'm sorry, I just mentioned my fork there. Uh, but you can see that it's actually written it. Now, without any challenges, you can use almost any open source PHP project in M1. Um, it was a very challenging thing to build, especially working with the PHP tokenizer and understanding how to actually uh, parse libraries into a format for Magento 1. Of course, having this has given us the flexibility that if you wanted to experiment with any piece of code, we can now do so. Um, if you want to use, let's say, Guzzle in a project, you can pull it in, rewrite it to verify and do it. If you want to use any other library, it's as simple as that. But if you had Composer, which many of you are familiar with, um, it's basically the de facto package manager for PHP. Now, if you used Ruby, it's Bundler. If you use Python, it's pip, nodes, npm. Uh, basically recursively manages all the transitive dependencies and supports many different ways of class loading. And uh, that's not all. I think Composer is backed by a very good ecosystem of packages centrally managed through packages or any open source status compliant repository. It's a lot similar to pulling in a Java library from Maven Central, which is a lot of the stuff that is currently missing on M1. You can, of course, pull it from Pear, but that's pretty much it. And after that, you're largely on your own. Um, now, on Magento 2, it's literally for us as simple as this. You just call Composer Require. It amends your dependency file. And uh, you can see I mentioned at the rate stable, I could peg it to a particular version and all future updates for us is basically as simple as uh, Composer update. But when building for M2, if you contrast the differences in building for M1 and M2, you can see that in M1, we had to build custom tooling to support our development workflow. I mean, either you could patch the auto loader, which like I said, is not um, a sane thing to do or you could use, uh, there's no easy way to use PSR04 code because again, PSR4 you would require a custom autoloader and uh, you can't really build a very same dependency management project. Like, so largely every bit of code that you have is largely in your app code directory. So as an extension vendor, we were largely crippled, but on Magento 2, without having to work with any custom tooling, we were able to move a lot, lot quicker. So we shaped off an entire project from our development process when building for extensions. So this just kind of shows you that while even in a common development workflow when it comes to dependency management or any other thing, M2 has made a lot of things, a largely a lot of things easier, uh, removes a lot of friction in building stuff. So I'll walk you through also the next section now, and that's about packaging extensions. So. Uh, while, while many agencies write extensions and they often deploy it through JIT, we often publish extensions and we publish them to Magento Connect, the Magento Marketplace. So for M1, when we started building and packaging extensions and I came across the team, it was a, largely a very tedious process of packaging extensions for M1. I mean, for those of you who've used the Magento Connect Packager, it, it looks like this. You go through step one, you go through step two, you go to step three, step four, and yet another step. I mean, you're beginning to see the big picture here that it's, it's error prone. You could save this, but it has a lot of manual overhead required in packaging. If you go and try to figure out a way to build automation into your packaging system on M1, it's non-existent. There's no way to build the equivalent of a CI CD system on M1 where you could build, zip up a package and ship it out on Magento 1. It doesn't necessarily exist. And it shouldn't have to be so hard for building an extension. And to highlight this, like we, 
we even required custom tooling like on M1, like this is again a project that we've built and uh, because we are literally building on every pull request merge and um, it's, it's a Magento automated packager, it's using a JSON based DSL for package definition, it's largely similar to the XML files found in, in Magento and packages. You define your structure, you have all your block patterns for include exclude files, it's a composer tool and you just run uh, the packaging tool and it packages everything into a Magento Connect compliant package that you can ship out. Uh, now there's some minor differences in why you couldn't do this with just a simple script is because the Magento One packaging is so proprietary and kind of coupled. There's a, uh, the way the tar file is generated has some custom byte headers, so you cannot just use a command line tool to package the files. Uh, the XML file has a checksum of every single file in the tooling system, so you cannot really just generate an XML of file names. You would need to hash every single file and include that. So it's a bit, it's, it's, it's largely quite challenging. And that's why we built, again, a tool. So if you're ever using any kind of packaging system on M1, uh, requirements on M1 for packaging, you can use like our tool. I'm not sure why we call it magazine, but yeah, it was like a magazine of a gun. Yeah. But um, yeah, so this is what we've been using. Whereas if you're on M2, it's basically, if you, if you do need to package, you could either use the JIT, uh, you could either use the composer archive, or if you're pushing to a repository, you basically can just uh, do a JIT push and tag your release and have it available on packages or Magento's Satis repo. And it's as simple as that. Now, if you think of the development challenges again, when it comes to packaging differences on M1 versus M2, you can see that on M1, there's very little or no automation. At the most, you could save your configuration once and go through the UI to repackage every single time. You have a customized archive fam for a format. It's laborious and it's error prone if you have typos in your, uh, in your packaging um, uh, input fields. And uh, if you want to get around that, you need custom tooling. Whereas with Composer and just zipping it up on Magento 2, you've again literally shaved a large part of your development process out of the way. So for us, between dependency management and uh, packaging extension M2, which is a large part of our extension development flow, we've actually cut short our development time largely. I mean, and the same also would go for something like testing. And I think Hanu would be the best to actually walk you through it. <coughs> Thank you, Brian. Uh, yeah, I will say a few words about uh, testing. Uh, in Magento 1 and testing in Magento 2. Uh, as you might know, there's no built-in tools for a built-in testing framework for, for M1. Uh, there is a Magento testing framework available, uh, which is an external Magento, Magento plugin. Uh, we haven't really tested that or given, given that one um, shot yet, but I'm just gonna talk quickly what, what we've been using for testing our extension. Uh, first one, uh, we're using robot framework, which is basically uh, it's a st acceptance testing framework written in Python. Really easy to write your own Python libraries if you're, if you're familiar with Python. Uh, uses Selenium under the hood, so basic, uh, Selenium to run the actual browser. So basically, if you, if you run the robot locally, you can see the browser run. And uh, yeah, uh, of course, it has all the, all the features that Selenium has as well. Uh, another tooling uh, we're using, it's called Blacklight. Again, one, uh, one in-house extension that we built. And for Bla uh, Blacklight, we, we generally use for, uh, for code, coverage, code coverage. So basically, we have an idea how much of, of our code is actually covered with, with tests. Uh, yeah, a robot framework. Uh, Quite simple tool, built actually <clears throat> uh, one of the Ericsson's rivals, Nokia in Finland originally. Uh, really easy to use, I would say basically it works uh, with keywords rather than actual like programming. Uh, the keywords you could, you could think of those as, as test cases or functions or whatever reusable elements in, in the robot framework. Uh, 
yeah, as I said, it's really easy to get get started with. Uh, you can, uh, if, even if you're not, not a programmer, you're a uh, quality assurance uh, engineer or, or uh, something else, uh, you, can, you can basically read what's happening and what the test case uh, actually covers. Uh, it's platform agnostic, so basically you can test any website, any web application with the, with the robot framework. Uh, yeah, uh, the downsides of the robot framework is that, uh, again, it's a, it's a kind of custom tooling if you think about Magento, so it's not like meant for Magento in a way, or not even testing PHP applications. It's just an overall, uh, or like a tool that you can run browser with. Uh, it doesn't really have any pictures. Uh, that you can you can load or build in libraries to, to actually run the pictures. And uh, if you need uh, a bit more complex tests, it gets really hard because as I said, it doesn't really, it's not really a programming language, even though you can use Python, uh, the, the keywords, the, the dealing with the keywords and like, uh, it, it just gets, gets really tricky. Uh, Blacklight, what we use for code coverage, code coverage, it's basically, as I said, it's, a, it's an extension that anyone can install to Magento. Uh, you can, for, for the driver that it, it actually uses to, to keep on track what, what's been covered, you can use xdebug or PHP debug. And uh, yeah, under the hood, it uses uh, the, uh, PHP or like xdebug or, uh, xdebug or PHP debug to gather all the information and it outputs actually like the, the, the code coverage reports in the standard PHP unit, unit way. And uh, yeah, you don't, you don't necessarily need any other uh, robot or any other framework or any, any other tool actually to, to use this. You can basically just set, the, set Blacklight to record your browsing and basically it will tell you uh, how much you covered from, from, the, from the code while you were browsing. Uh, yeah, then on Magento 2, uh, there's a built-in Magento functional testing framework. Uh, uh, as Ben mentioned this morning, there's going to be apparently a new test framework. Uh, I would love to have a word with them later on, that, like what that will cover. It, it sounds good. Uh, the Magento uh, functional testing frame, framework that's now in, at least included in 2.1 uh, version, it's already pretty good. So you get you can use. It uses PHP unit. Uh, it provides an easy way to, to load pictures. And uh, yeah, of course, it, it uses Selenium as well to run the browser. But uh, anyways, it's still standard PHP unit way of doing, doing tests. So, so it's pretty good. Uh, there's, a, there's a quite a uh, heavy task to get it up and running or to, to kind of like wrap your head around how, how it's structured and how you how you can write your write your own tests. But once you once you've done the, the heavy lifting it should be quite quite easy to, to create more tests and, and test your test your own own extensions or own <clears throat> own code as well. Uh, the functional testing framework already has a huge uh, amount of ready test cases. So even if you wouldn't would it be doing own tests or testing any, any like own extensions, it's still a good idea to, to just run the whole test too if, if you have, when you, when you have set up. It will basically test a lot of basic stuff like creating categories, creating products, making sure that those are available uh, on, on the front end and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, to sum it up, again, M1, uh, no really like a standard framework or standard way of, of, of testing. Uh, yeah, no easy way to get code coverage, and uh, one way or another, another, you need custom tooling, custom plugins, something like that to actually, actually run the tests. And uh, yeah, M2 comes with the built-in uh, functional testing framework, which is PHP unit. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's, it's, it's a built-in, so uh, looks promising, and yeah, standardized way of doing tests in Magento. Alrighty, back to Redang. So, <clears throat> again, this is just to kind of contrast a little bit about our development on M1 versus M2. As M2 gains a lot of traction for us, we've also kind of accelerated our development, but we have, this is just a kind of timeline of our repository activity that we've just screencapped. Um, 
I mean, as of this month, we basically offer all the same functionality on M1. We have a rather complex extension, I would say, but building for M2 has been a lot simpler because we have skipped past all the hurdles in building any extension. Um, and uh, without this overhead, we pretty much uh, played catch up in a very, very short amount of time. I mean, literally within one quarter, we have tooled it to have everything that we've encompassed over the years. Um, to be fair, it wouldn't be a totally fair comparison since a lot of learnings we did take away from Magento 1 to Magento 2. But then, as an extension developer, uh, there's, there's other processes that we didn't, we could easily omit on Magento 2 to support our workflow. Now, if I did actually check out some of the code that we actually have on amount of slot, that code that we've actually written to support our development on M1, and you can see that we have built like our whole magazine process, including all the other dependencies and the cannibalized Magento core is like 30K lines, purifies another 15K lines of AST parsing code, another 6,000 for our code coverage code. There's an extra 50,000 lines of just tooling, which is not even, not even critical to the, to the product that we are actually shipping. It's just peripheral and probably riddled with bugs to some extent, I would even say. Whereas in Magento 2, we actually largely skipped this. Um, so while I, while I would say this would be a very good example of how, uh, while re-platforming to Magento 2 would come with its challenges in terms of extension development and for us uh, to use it as a platform for product delivery, it's actually been rather sane to actually work with. We're now able to kind of ship pretty much or iterate a lot quicker on M2 than we can do pretty much with almost any other platform, largely based on the fact that um, it's 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 a bit more using industry standard practices for both testing, packaging, dependency management, uh, packaging, and uh, centralized repository management. So that would uh, that would be there. Um, I think this, even though hopefully I haven't rushed through it, but I think this kind of sums it up. There's a lot more that we've actually put in place on Magento that we would have actually uh, liked to cover. And if somebody would like to have any questions on how we do static analysis on PHP uh, to detect issues on M1 and M2 uh, and things like that. Uh, really kind of uh, great uh, to explain. Um, I think some of the tooling that we've kind of put in place on Magento 1 since it's still a very uh, large user base, uh, especially in terms of rewriting dependencies if you ever wanted to use anything, uh, we're more than happy to kind of give a quick demo on how it really works. So. If there's any questions, we'd love to take it, and uh, be more than happy to give a small demo of how we do packaging and uh, uh, class rewriting for M1 packages. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,